My name is Karen Fitzgerald, and I'm a Jewish lay leader here at JBLM. And we can be found at the Main Post Chapel Annex and on Facebook. And I, you would need to look under JBLM Jewish Community. And there are links also available on the First Core Chapel pages. Now today I'd like to talk about Passover, which began Wednesday night, April 8th. And this is a celebration of spring, of birth, and rebirth of a journey from slavery to freedom and of taking responsibility for yourself, the community, and the world. Given the current health crisis, Passover celebrations for JBLM families will continue to be in their homes with their families. So now I would like to read about a Passover celebration during the Civil War in West Virginia. And this was written by J Joseph A. Joel, the Jewish messenger, and dated 3 March 1866, Passover in Camp. Being appraised of the approaching feast of Passover, 20 of my comrades and co-religionists in the regiment united in a request to our commanding officer, who was going to be our future president, Rutherford B. Hayes, for relief from duty in order that we may partake in the hol holy days, which he readily acceded to. The first point was gained, and as the paymaster had lately visited the regiment, he had left us plenty of greenbacks. Our next business was to find some suitable person to proceed to Cincinnati, Ohio to buy us matzah. Our sutler, and I had to look this up, a sutler is a person who followed an army and sold provisions to the soldiers. So our sutler, being a co-religionist and going home to that city, readily undertook to send them. We were anxiously awaiting to receive our matzah, and about the middle of the morning of the eve of Passover, a supply train arrived in camp, and to our delight, seven barrels of matzah. On opening them, we were surprised and pleased to find that our thoughtful sutler had also enclosed two Haggadahs. Now the Haggadahs means blueprint, and it's a blueprint for the ritual Passover dinner, and means telling, as its primary purpose is to facilitate the retelling of the story of Exodus from Egypt. Anyway, back to the story. So our sutler had enclosed two Haggadahs and prayer books. We were now able to keep the Seder nights if we could only obtain the other requisites for that occasion. We held a consultation and decided to send parties to forage in the country while a party stayed to build a log hut for the service. About the middle of the afternoon, the foragers arrived. Having been quite successful, we obtained two kegs of cider, a lamb, several chickens, and some eggs. Horseradish or parsley we could not obtain, but in lieu we found a weed whose bitterness, I apprehend, exceeded anything our forefathers enjoyed. We were still in a great quandary. We were like the man who drew the elephant in the lottery. We had the lamb, but did not know what part was to represent it at the table. But Yankee ingenuity prevailed, and it was decided to cook the whole and put it on the table. Then we could dine off it and be sure we could have the right part. The necessities for, for the cherosis, though, we could not obtain. So we got a brick, which rather hard to digest, reminded us by looking at it for what purpose it was intended. And cherosis means clay, and though it goes by many different names around the world, it is a sweet relish made with fruits, nuts, spices, as well as wine and a binary such as honey. And it represents the mortar that was used to put the bricks together. And now back to our story. At dark, we had all prepared and were ready to commence the service. There being no chazan present, I was selected to read the services, which I commenced by asking the blessings of the Almighty on the food before us and to preserve our lives from danger. The ceremonies were passing off very nicely until we arrived at the part where the bitter herb was to be taken. We all had a large portion of the herb ready to eat at the moment I said the blessings. Each ate his portion. When horrors, what a scene ensued in our little congregation. It is impossible for my pen to describe. The herb was very bitter and very fiery like cayenne pepper and excited our thirst to such a degree that we forgot the law authoring us to drink only four cups. And the con consequences was we drank up all the cider. Those that drank the more freely became excited and one thought he was Moses, another Aaron, and one had the audacity to call himself a Pharaoh. The consequences was a skirmish with nobody hurt, only Moses, Aaron, and Pharaoh had to be carried to the camp and there left in the arms of Morpheus. This, this slight incident did not take away our appetite, and after doing justice to our 
lamb, chickens, and eggs, we resumed the second portion of the service without anything occurring worthy of note. There, in the wild woods of West Virginia, away from home and friends, we consecrated and offered up to the ever-loving God of Israel our praise and sacrifice. I doubt whether the spirits are our forefathers, had they been looking down on us, standing there with our arms by our side, ready for an attack, faithful to our God and our cause, would have imagined themselves amongst mortals, enacting this commemoration of the scene that transpired in Egypt. Since then, a number of my comrades have fallen in battle, in defending the flag they volunteered to protect with their lives. I have myself received a number of wounds, all but mortal. But there is no occasion in my life that gives me more pleasure and satisfaction than I, when I remember the celebration of Passover, 1862. Thank you for your attention, and Chag Pesach Sameach. Happy Passover 2020.